Hi everyone, welcome to our video presentation. So in this video, I will be discussing with you the financial needs of every Filipino and why is it important for you to have a smart financial planning in your life. This is Lourdes Ganang from smartfinancialplanning.info. Now to begin my discussion with you about the different financial needs of every Filipino and why smart financial planning is important in your life, I'd like to ask you first this question. What are your dreams? I'm sure lahat tayo may kanya-kanyang pangarap, di ba? Iba-iba tayo ng mga pangarap para sa buhay natin. So you have your own dreams for yourself. And if you're married, you also have your dreams for your wife or for your husband. And if you're a parent, you also have your dreams for your kids. And if you're still single, I'm sure most of us, we have dreams for our parents as well. And also for your siblings. Now, as you can see here, this is an example of a dream board. I'm sure most of us, we have our own dream boards. Diyan nakalagay yung mga iba't ibang dreams na gusto nating ma-achieve, di ba? Or yung iba't ibang goals na gusto natin na ma-achieve sa buhay natin. Now, you have different dreams in different stages in your life. Ano ba yung mga different stages in life? Unang-una, syempre, yung pagiging single. Doon tayo nagsisimula, di ba? And then, eventually, we get married. And then, after getting married, we become parents. And then, after becoming parents, pag lumaki na yung mga anak natin, natapos na sila sa college, nakapag-work na, and they have their own families na rin, syempre, may iwan na lang would be you and your husband or your, or your wife. So, you become empty nesters. Kayong dalawa na lang yung magkasama. And then later on, you'll be retiring, di ba? So, these are the different stages in, in our lives. Lahat tayo dumadaan dito. And in different stages in life, there are also different dreams. Sa bawat stages in our lives, iba-iba yung nagiging pangarap natin. Let's say, for example, when you were single. Siyempre, ang pangarap mo while you're single is makapag-ipon, makapag-invest at the same time makapag-travel sa iba't ibang places, di ba? To really explore. And during this time, eto rin yung mahilig tayo sa mga iba't ibang gadgets. Sa phone, sa camera, sa laptop. And also, andun din yung dream natin na magkaroon ng sarili nating sasakyan, di ba? And yung iba gusto mag magkaroon ng sariling business habang single pa lamang. And then when you get married, syempre nag-iiba ulit yung dreams natin. We dream together with our partners in life, di ba? Yung pagkakaroon ng uh, sariling bahay, pagkakaroon ng sariling sasakyan as a married couple, and then go shopping together, mabili natin yung mga gusto nating furniture sa bahay, or any anything na makakabuti para sa, para sa marriage. And also, saving together and investing together. And at the same time, andang pa din yung pangarap to travel the world together with your with your husband and, or with your wife. And then when we become parents, or when you become parents, syempre ang nagiging priority na niyan is to provide good education for your kids hanggang sa makagraduate sila. At the same time, um, secure your um, kids with a roof on their heads, di ba? Yung meron kayong sariling bahay. So, you you take out a house loan and then kapag lumalaki na yung kids or yung family, um, gusto natin magkaroon tayo ng mas malaking sasakyan and also gusto natin maibigay lahat sa mga anak natin. So, kasama din sa pangarap natin na um, ma maibili natin yung mga pangailangan nila and even yung mga wants nila. And also, anon pa din yung dream natin na makapag-travel kasama yung mga bata para may nakikita sila na ibang um, culture, nakakapag-explore din sila, kasama tayo. And then, when our kids grow up and they will start to have their own lives, have their own families, syempre may iiwan na lang kayong mag-asawa, di ba? Empty nester. Magagawa nyo na yung mga hobbies na gusto nyo gawin before, na hindi nyo magawa. During those times na nag-aalaga at nagpapalaki tayo ng mga um, anak natin, di ba? So, may time tayo para maging um, plantito, plantita, or makapag-explore kung hindi man natin naabutan yung um, pag-explore sa mga different gadgets or paggamit ng laptop, internet, and everything. 
nagkakaroon tayo ng time para sa social media, nagkakaroon tayo ng time to cook together. Kasi nga, as empty nesters, kayong dalawa na lang yung maiiwan sa bahay. So, you will have the time for dating as well. So, yun yung different um, dreams that um, people has when they are already in this stage. And then, when we retire, syempre, kung gusto natin pag nag-retire tayo, we could still travel, you know, the world and enjoy our time with our grandchildren. And then, at the same time, provide gifts for our grandchildren or support our kids sa mga families nila, which, which really happens. I mean, pwede naman na maging pangarap mo talaga yan na makapag- bigay ka pa rin sa iyong mga anak, di ba? Kahit na may mga kanya-kanya ng silang pamilya. And of course, to enjoy uh, our time, our our time at retirement. Yun ang gusto natin. Yun ang pangarap natin, yung hindi tayo mamang problema pag nag-retire tayo. So, these are the different stages in in our lives. Lahat tayo dadaan dito. Well, some may not, but most of the time, ito yung mga stages sa uh, lives natin na pinagdadaanan natin. And we have different dreams in in these different stages in life. Now, sa mga dreams natin na yun, I'm sure ang pinaka number one question dyan is how to achieve your dreams? Paano natin ma-achieve yung mga goals natin in life? So, una, syempre mag-work tayo, hard work, ba? Diba? Para makapag-ipon, para sa travel, sa car, sa education, sa house, sa lahat ng mga gusto natin ma-achieve. Yung iba, magpuputap ng business para mas lalo lumaki yung income nila, para mas lalong maging profitable. And yung iba naman, natututo pagdating sa pag invest sa stocks at saka sa mutual funds. So, may mga kanya-kanyang paraan tayo on how we will achieve our dreams. Pero, what if, paano? So, may mga tanong na ganito. What if magkaroon ka ng cancer? Paano kung magkasakit ka? What if maaga kang kunin ni Lord? What if ma-disabled ka at di ka na makakapag-work permanently? What if mawalan ka ng work at wala ka pa rin savings? Or paano kung wala kang ipon pag nag ka na? At paano kung ma-aksidente ka? Nangyayari naman kasi lahat ng ito, ba? Diba? Itong mga pero, what if, at mga paano na ito, this really happens in real life. So why do we need financial planning? So dito papasok, Yung sagot kung bakit kailangan natin na magplano financially because there are unexpected events that happens in our life. Ito yung mga bagay na hindi natin control at hindi rin natin alam kung kailan darating. Kaya nga siya unexpected, di ba? Like death. I mean, lahat naman tayo, alam natin mamamatay tayo. Pero hindi natin alam kung kailan. Di ba? It could be today or tomorrow or in the next 5 or 10 years but we don't know when. So, very unexpected ang death kapag nangyari. Sickness, accident, and disability. Unexpected din siya kasi hindi mo naman alam kung magkaka-cancer ka ba or kung magkakasakit ka ng malubha in the near future. ba? Hindi, hindi mo rin alam kung ma-accidente ka. Nobody knows. And hindi mo rin alam kung madidisabled ka or may mangyari accident sa work at madisabled ka. So, these events that happens in our lives, hindi natin ina-expect and we have to prepare for it. We also have expected events in our life. Ito yung alam natin na mangyayari at kailangan natin paghandaan. Like, if you become a parent and if you have kids, ba paghahandaan mo yung education nila. Ito yung number one priority ng mga parents kapag um, may mga kanya-kanyang uh, anak na sila. Siyempre, gusto nila na mapagtapos ng pag-aaral yung mga anak nila. Retirement. Kung hindi tayo mamamatay ng maaga, syempre, na-expect na natin. Um, in our old age, we will be retiring. Syempre, hindi naman laging mag-work tayo until our retirement, until our old age, ba? So, we have to prepare because expected na natin to na magre-retire tayo sooner, ba? Or later, kung kailan man yung retirement uh, ninyo. Now, when you die, is your family prepared financially? I'm sure meron sa atin na talagang iniisip yan gabi-gabi na what if pag ako nawala, since ako lang yung breadwinner, ako lang nagpo-provide ng income para sa family ko, tas kung wala ka pang ipon, 
iniisip mo kung paano, paano, paano yung anak mo, paano yung asawa mo, paano yung magulang mo, paano yung mga kapatid mo na pinag-aaral mo pa. How are they going to cope up? So, prepared ba ang family mo financially kapag nawala ka na as their breadwinner? So, that's a big question that you have to ask yourself. Now, when you die, there will be expenses that will be left behind. So, ikaw, since wala ka na, hindi na ikaw yung mamamroblema nun eh. Pero ang mamamroblema ay yung pamilya mo na maiiwan. So, eto lang naman yung mga expenses na kailangan nilang harapin when you're gone. First, yung death expenses. Ano ba yung mga death expenses na ito? Hospital or medical bills? Funeral expenses and estate taxes. Kapag na-hospital ka bago ka matay, syempre may maiiwanan ng mga bills sa hospital na kailangan nilang bayaran bago i-release ang iyong katawan, di ba? And then yung funeral expenses, kung hindi mo pa ito napaghandaan at wala ka pang um, plan, memorial plan for this, mahal yung at the moment na bibili sila ng casket at maghahanap ng lupa. So, Ito yung mga expenses na kailangan harapin ng pamilya mo. And if you are not prepared financially, saan sila kukuha ng pera pambabayad sa hospital or medical bills para sa funeral expenses? And kapag meron ka mo mga properties na ipapamaan, kailangan pa nila magbayad ng estate taxes. Another expenses that they have to face are the living expenses. Siyempre sila buhay pa. So, may iwan sa kanila yung mga mortgage payments kung meron kang House loan na ikaw ang nagbabayad, if you have car loans or credit card payments, sila yung magbabayad nun, sila yung maghahagilap ng pera na pambayad sa mga na, maiiwan mong utang. Also, the household expenses. Siyempre, since matitira pa sila dito sa earth, kailangan nilang mabuhay, kailangan nilang bumili ng kanilang mga groceries, foods, and they have to pay the bills. And then the kids' education. Paano kung naiwan mo yung mga anak mo na nasa elementary or high school pa lang? Who will continue to pay for their education? So, these are the living expenses that, you know, it's either your wife or your parents or your siblings or your husband have to actually face na even when you're gone, patuloy pa rin itong mga living expenses na to. And also, the emergency fund. Siyempre, Kung wala ka namang naipon na emergency fund, emergency talaga yon kasi nawala ka na as your breadwinner. So, look at all these expenses, the death expenses and the living expenses. Meron na ba ang family mo na pambabaya dito mga to if in case you're, you know, you're taken away by God already? And then, travel and leisure. I mean, sabihin na natin hindi siya ganun ka-priority, but if you have made your your the lifestyle of your family very comfortable enough that you could travel with your kids with your with your family syempre hahanapin nila yan diba and it it's also an expense that they will have to look for um how they could actually cope up with it now only 15% of Filipinos have life insurance coverage that's according to insurance commission report uh, year 2013 so, 85% of Filipinos are afraid that their families will not survive financially if they die early. The question is, nasan ka ba dito? Nasa 15% ka ba na merong life insurance coverage? Or are you with the 85% Filipinos na walang peace of mind every night kakaisip na if something happens to you, if you die early, alam mong hindi makakapag-survive ang family mo financially at maghihirap talaga. Now, each day, you have to work to earn money for the food, for clothing, for the shelter, for, for your house, and also to pay taxes. And then, ito, for travel and leisure, your creation, your entertainment, and to save money, ba? Now, imagine all of this, ha? What will happen? What will happen if you die early? So, let's say, for example, ikaw to na kumikita. Ikaw yung breadwinner. So, th- this is your income. And then, on the other side, okay, eto yung pamilya mo, eto yung ini-enjoy nila na comfortable uh, lifestyle. So, they have, you have a house, you have a car, your kids go to school, you're able to travel the world, you could buy them all the gadgets that they want, sa gana sa grocery, sa pagkain. So, sobrang comfortable ng lifestyle ng family mo. Dahil, na po provide po yung income na kailangan para doon. Now, if you're gone, 
what's going to happen to all these things that they're enjoying right now? Dahil wala ka na. Lahat yan, pwedeng bumagsak, lahat yan pwedeng mawala. And kung akala mo sa teleserya lang nangyayari yung mga ganyang drama sa buhay, it really happens in real life, ba? Diba? Now, there are different standards of living that, that we have in our lives. Some, nasa charity. As in, hindi ganun kaganda yung work, right? Walang trabaho. So, namamalimos or nanghihingi or, or nang nangungutang or dependent lang sa iba. And some, nasa poverty. May trabaho, pero maraming utang. Hindi pa rin nakakapag-survive. Bare existence. Hindi naman ganun kahirap, pero hindi rin ganun kayaman sa buhay. Necessities. Napoprovide mo lahat ng necessities ng pamilya mo, but not exactly yung mga wants in life. Yung kumbaga sa sobra pa sa necessities. Yung comfort, eto yung at least napoprovide mo na yung necessities and comfortable naman yung lifestyle ng family mo. So kahit pa paano, pati yung mga wants nila ay naibibigay mo din. Luxury, eto yung sobrang yaman mo na talaga. As in, kahit ano, ano yung gustuhin nila, more than more than pa dun sa needs nila, more than pa sa wants nila, kaya mong i-provide. So, ito yung family mo. Let's say, for example, your family is living a comfortable lifestyle. And that's because you have two sources of income. Okay. You, kung ikaw parent ka or breadwinner ka, single ka, ikaw yung nagpo-provide sa family mo, you're the one who's working, kaya nasosuportahan mo yung comfortable lifestyle ng family mo. And you have savings and investments, ba? Diba? So you have money at work aside from you working, nakapag-save ka, nakapag-invest ka din, or merong hang life insurance. So what's gonna happen is that if ever you die or mawala ka, ba? Diba? Mawala ka. Ang mangyayari sa family mo, syempre, gugulong sila pababa sa bare existence kasi nawala ka na naghahanap buhay para sa kanila eh, na nagpo-provide ng income. Na what if wala ka ring savings or investment, wala kang perang na itabi para sa pamilya mo. Okay? So from bare existence, kapag wala kang money at work or savings at investments, gugulong sila lalo dun sa standard of living na charity. So, kapag wala kang savings and investments, yung standard of living na ina-enjoy na family before from comfortable lifestyle, not even sa bearing existence mapupunta, kundi pwede mo magsak siya sa charity. And syempre, ayaw mo naman na mangyari yan sa family mo for sure, ba diba? Now, what are you going to do? Kung ayaw mo mangyari yan sa kanila, syempre, iniisip mo na ngayon, ano yung pwede kong gawin para hindi, hindi umabot sa ganung point na kapag nawala ako sa buhay nila bilang uh, breadwinner nila, and hindi sila magsasuffer ng ganun financially. Okay, so as you can see here, I have a computation here. Let's say for example, yun nga, may monthly savings ka na 5,000 pesos. So in 12 months, may 60,000 pesos ka, okay? Now, if you will save it in a bank in one year, meron kang 60,000, 24 pesos and 38 centavos. Pag tinayang deposit mo naman yan, 61 pesos and 282 pesos and 75 cents. Pag inilagay mo sa investments in one year, kung tutubo siya ng 10% or kikita siya ng 10% interest ha, may 63,351 pesos and 41 cents ka. Now, pwedeng umabot hanggang 20 years makapag-ipon ka. Okay? So, in 20 years, may maipon kang 1,209,082 pesos and 67 cents. Kapag nag-save ka sa banko, with that interest ha, 0.075%. Pag sa time deposit naman at 3.9%, as long as hindi mo siya withdraw, in 20 years, you will have 1,819,301 pesos and 22 cents. Ngayon, kung sa investment naman siya lalagay, sa 10% na ano, interest ha, you'll have 3,828,484 pesos and 55 cents. Now, ang question dyan, paano kung hindi ka umabot ng 20 years na pag-iipon? Paano kung hindi ka rin umabot in 10 years? Paano kung hindi ka rin umabot ng 5 years? Hanggang 1 year lang, tas kinuha ka na ni Lord. Ang makukuha na ng pamilya mo, pinakamataas na would be 63,351 pesos and 41 cents kung nag-invest ka sa mga stocks na may 10% na interest earnings, ba? So, yan. Yan yung iiwanan mo sa pamilya mo. And will that be enough? kung gumagasos ng 
20,000 or 30,000 pesos a month ang pamilya mo coming from your income. Syempre hindi, hindi siya magiging sapat, 'di ba? So here's what you can do. Protect and secure your family's future with life insurance. Because life insurance replaces your income to provide the financial resources to take care for your family's needs even when you are no longer around. So kahit wala ka na, if you have life insurance, it will replace your income. Para yung mga gastusan nila, yung, yung death expenses, living expenses na kailangan nilang bayaran, they will have income to provide for that. Life insurance is also your expression of love for your family by giving them peace of mind. I'm sure ayaw mo naman iwanan yung asawa mo na umiyak na nga dahil sa pagkawala mo tapos iiyak pa dahil sa mga gastusan, sa mga bayarin, sa financial burden na maiiwan mo sa kanya, ba? Diba? Now, to help them maintain the same standard of living even when you are gone already. Nakita nyo naman kanina yung paggulong ng standard of living ng family mo from comfortable lifestyle tapos babagsak sa charity. Ayaw mo naman siguro makita yung mga anak mo na parang namamalimos para lang may pagpatuloy nila yung education nila or makikita nila sila sa ibang bahay, bahay ng kapatid mo or bahay ng, ng tito mo or tita mo. Ayaw mo naman siguro na makita yun or mangyari yun sa pamilya mo, diba? So, going back dun sa illustration natin kanina, So, if this is your income, ba, diba, na nagsosupport para, para ma-maintain yung standard of living ng family mo, okay? Okay, so, yung coin na to represents life insurance. So, pag kumuha ka ng life insurance, this is what's going to happen. Pag nawala ka, because you have life insurance, hindi babagsak yung standard of living ng family mo or merong magsosupport para sa mga expenses ng family mo kahit wala ka na as your breadwinner, okay? Kasi meron kang life insurance that will replace your income. Yun po yung analogy dito sa nakikita nyo na to, okay? So, kung kanina bumagsak kasi wala kang life insurance. Now, with this one, if you have life insurance, hindi po babagsak or sabihin na natin na may mag, magre-replace dun sa income na nagpo-provide sa mga pangangailangan ng family mo. So, your life insurance or the income protection, okay, it's needed if you have a spouse or a child or a parent that depends on you and your income. Kung ikaw ang breadwinner, you have to bear in your mind that your spouse, your child, or your parent, the people that you love who are depending on you, okay, needs this for them to get protected and for, for you to secure their, their future, Now, here's a sample computation for a life insurance using term life plan, okay? So, pwede ka naman kasing kumuha ng term insurance to protect your income. It's a life insurance. Now, I've given here an example for a female client, 30 years old, healthy at non-smoker, okay? So, as you can see here on our table, yung mga benefits that you will get in this kind of plan, sa term insurance plan na to, you will have a life insurance coverage with a face amount of 1,500,000 pesos. So, yung life insurance coverage po, yan po yung makukuha na amount ng family mo if in case you die, they will get 1,500,000 pesos. And then, you also have accidental death benefit. If in case you die because of an accident, yun na naging cause ng iyong kamatayan, then, they will get another 1,500,000 pesos. And if you have, and if you are diagnosed with a critical illness, then you will have an amount of 1,500,000 pesos for your enhanced critical illness. Ito po yung pag nagkasakit ka, ng asin sobrang malubha, kaya nga siya critical illness. And for sure, kapag ganun kalubha yung sakit mo, kakailangan mo ng malaking amount, then, With the 1,500,000 pesos, you will have that at your disposal. Ibibigay sa'yo ng lump sum for you to be able to pay for your hospital, medical bills, or kung saan mo siya uh, kailangan gastusin para sa, para sa iyong recovery or para sa pagpapagaling mo. Now, total disability waiver is also included. Ang ibig sabihin lang po nito, if ever you get totally and permanently disabled at syempre, hindi mo na mababayaran tong premium ng insurance mo, ba? Diba? Uh, the total disability waiver will take effect wherein ma wait po yung premium. So, ang mangyayari po nun, yung insurance company na po yung magbabayad ng premium mo. 
So, yun yung benefits na itong term life insurance plan na to. Yung total annual premium sa computation na to is 17,269 pesos and 30 cents. Ibig sabihin, uh, premium payment po na yan for one whole year. Okay? Semi-annual naman is 9,240 pesos and 73 cents. Tapos, quarterly, every three months, 4,923 pesos and 41 cents naman yung pwede mong bayaran. So, pwede kang mamili kung gusto mong bayaran ng annual or semi-annual or quarterly mo siya babayaran every three months. So, it, it's up to you kung paano mo siya gusto mong bayaran, kung ano mode of payment. Yan po yung mga uh, mode of payment na pwede mong pagpilian sa plan na yan. So, kung kukumputin po natin, for you to be able to protect your income, to have life insurance, okay, it's just 1,641 pesos and 14 cents per month. Kung every week, it's 410 pesos and 28 cents. And kung per day naman natin kukumputin, 58 pesos and 68 cents. Diba? Nakakabili nga tayo sa McDonald's or sa Jollibee ng meal natin worth more than pa ng 59 pesos or 60 pesos. Diba? Ano ba naman yung magtatabi ka ng 60 pesos per day for you to cover yourself para if in case something happens to you, if you die, your family won't suffer financially. Okay? This is just a sample computation. Iba-iba po magiging computation. Depende po yan sa age at depende kung gano'n ka ka-healthy. Okay? So, it's really important for you to discuss it with your financial advisor, the one who sent you this video para ma-discuss nyo yan sa financial planning. Now, this is another sample computation for a life insurance using a VUL plan naman. So, yung kanina term, Pag term insurance po kasi, nato-terminate yun. Tem uh, kumbaga temporary lang siya. And wala po siyang kasamang um, investment. With a VUL plan, ito po yung life insurance. Kumbaga may, may insurance ka na dito, may investment ka pa. Kaya siya tinawag na VUL plan. Now, this will be discussed uh, during your financial planning and financial needs analysis with your financial advisor if you want to learn more about the difference of term insurance and a VUL plan. Okay? So, for the purpose of giving a sample computation para magkaroon kayo ng idea kung magkano ba, okay, if ever nakukuha ka ng term or ng VUL plan for you to cover yourself, okay? So, ang benefits po dito sa plan na to, you still have a life insurance coverage worth 1,500,000. Accidental death benefit is 1,500,000 pesos also. Your enhanced critical illness is 1 million pesos. And your total disability waiver, it's also included in this plan. Again, kapag ikaw ay na-disabled, totally and permanently, hindi ka na makakapag-trabaho so you can pay the premiums for your insurance. Then, uh, yung insurance company na yung magbabayad ng premium mo. Mawi-waive na yung premium. And then, as you can see with this, may additional na retirement or investment fund at age 65. Kasi nga, ang VL plan, may kasama po investment yan. So, ang investment or retirement fund mo at the age of 65 kung 10%, okay, consistent yung interest rate na kinikita ng iyong investment fund dito sa VUL plan na to. So, you will have a retirement or investment fund at about 3,368,319 pesos. Okay? So, yan, yan po yung investment portion ng VUL plan. So, nakikita nyo rin po dito sa table na to yung monthly premium. It's 2 1,470 pesos and 29 cents. So, every month, yan lang po yung itatabi mo for you to be able to get life insurance, cover ka with 1,500,000 pesos na mapupunta sa beneficiary mo if, if you die. And then, you can also pay quarterly, you can also pay semi-annually, or pwede naman annual premium para hindi ka na mag every month or every quarter na babayaran mo. It's just 28,472 Pesos and 75 centavos. Kung i-compute mo yan per week, it's 617 pesos and 61 cents. Tapos sa uh, per day naman, it's 88 pesos and 23 cents. So, 89, diba less than 100 pesos, but you will have all these benefits. Okay, makocover, makocover ng protection para sa family mo if in case something happens to you. You'll have critical illness, may accidental death benefit ka pa, and may investment fund ka pa. Okay, for this amount that you will be saving. Kung naintindihan mo yung concept ng income protection, kung breadwinner ka, makikita mo yung halaga ng pagkakaroon ng ganito para sa pamilya mo. Now, how are you going to pay for your medical bills or treatment if you get sick, if you get into an accident, or if you get disabled? 
again, these are unexpected events that happens in our lives. So, hindi natin alam kung mangyayari ba sa atin to or kailan siya mangyayari. Kasi anyone can get sick, anyone can get into an accident, anyone can get disabled. Hindi lang alam natin kung tayo yun. But if if ever that event happens, are you prepared for it? Meron ka bang pambabayad sa hospital? Meron ka bang pambabayad sa long-term recovery if you cannot go to work? So, how expensive is it if you get sick? Okay, this is for ICU confinement. Pinakababa na 40,000 per day. Sabihin na nating um, private pa rin yan. Pero, ang ICU confinement, it could run up to 40,000 to 100 or 150,000 a day. Depende sa hospital kung saan ka dadalhin or saan ka magpapakonfine. Now, with dialysis, okay, pati medication kasama na dyan, gagasas ka ng halos 50,000 per month. And then for chemotherapy, if ever, okay, na magkaroon ka ng cancer, 60,000 per session. Or pwedeng more than that pa, depende sa kung anong klaseng cancer ang um, dadapo sa'yo, di ba? Huwag naman sana, pero it, it can happen, di ba? At least, alam nyo kung magkano yung amount. And then, for brain aneurysm surgery, if it happens, it's 500,000 pesos. And then, for coronary artery bypass surgery, it's 600,000 pesos. And this is for kidney organ transplant. It up to 1.2 million pesos, ba? So, if if in case this happens to you, alin man dyan yung bigla kang magkasakit ng ganito, ang tanong, ready ka ba for this? Ready ka ba sa mga gastusan na ganito if you get sick? Now, did you know, 276 Filipinos die of heart disease every day. And one person dies of stroke every 9 minutes. And 61 people die of diabetes every day. And 142 people die of cancer every day. Nine people are diagnosed with cancer every hour. And five out of ten children are afflicted with pneumonia. And 75% of stroke victims become permanently disabled. Now, knowing all this, I mean, nangyayari naman talaga, di ba? And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure na may mga iba kayong kakilala na may pinagdaanan ng ganito or may pamilya na nagkaroon ng cancer, may pamilya na namatay dahil sa diabetes. So, this is the reality of life, di ba? We, we don't know how healthy we are. Hindi natin alam. Minsan, kahit na sobrang fit and healthy natin or ginagawa natin lahat para magpaka-healthy, minsan hindi natin alam kung bakit tayo dinadapuan ng cancer or ba tayo nagkakaroon ng ganitong sakit or bigla na lang tayo magkakaroon ng heart attack. So, hindi natin alam what could happen to us. Now, how prepared are you? Okay, so 5 out of 10 Filipinos have to borrow money. Yun yung masaklap, yun yung, yung reality eh, di ba, na pag isa sa atin nagkaroon ng sakit at hindi ganun ka prepared or hindi pinaghandaan to, yun talaga yung gagawin. Mag, Manghihiram tayo ng pera or magpuputap tayo ng GoFundMe account, mag, malanawagan tayo sa Facebook or sa social media just for us to be able to sustain or to be able to pay for our hospital or medical bills. Diba, yung may sakit ka na, pinagdadaanan mo na yung ganitong crisis, tapos wala ka pang pera, hindi mo pa alam kung saan mo kukuhain yung pera para sa pagpapagamot mo. 9 out of 10 are forced to use up their savings, investments, or sell their properties. Totoo naman, diba? Yung pag umabot na ng million ang kailangan mong bayaran sa hospital, what, what you're going to do for you just to save your loved ones is for you to sell your properties. Kung yung pwede mo maibenta para lang may pambayad ka sa hospitalization. Kasi gusto mo, ma-extend pa yung buhay. Gusto mo pa humaba yung buhay, di ba? Ayaw mo naman na mamatay yung mahal mo sa buhay. One out of ten have some form of health insurance but mostly in the form of HMO from their companies. And 53% of their healthcare expenses are shouldered out of pocket. Okay. Ang HMO, if, if you only have up to 200,000 pesos, na uh, benefit or limit doon sa iyong ano, hospitalization. Kung million na yung kailangan mo bayaran sa hospital, it won't be enough, de ba? So, 53% of the healthcare expenses, issue shoulder mo out of your pocket. Maglalabas at maglalabas ka pa rin ng, ng pera para doon, de ba? And even with with the field health, hindi naman lahat masasagot ng field health or hanggang sa hanggang sa bar, hanggang magkano yung kaya sagutin ng field health. 
Now, what will happen? So, kagaya nga na sabi natin, kapag gusto mo ma-extend ang buhay ng mahal mo sa buhay, para na mabayaran yung hospitalization, bebenta mo yung mga properties, lahat, sasakyan, bahay, kung ano man yan, ano man dyan yung pwede mo maibenta para lang makalikom ka ng pera. Or, yun nga, you will have to borrow money. So, you'll have debts, you'll have loans, or mag-set up ka ng GoFundMe account, or, or any um, platform dyan wherein you'll be able to raise money para sa hospitalization mo, or para sa hospitalization ng uh, mahal mo, if ever they get, you know, sick, or madis, magkaroon sila ng accident, ba? Diba? Now, in the financial planning pyramid, kaya very important, okay, that, that in this uh, financial planning pyramid that you're seeing right now, ha, is the wealth protection, okay? So, nangyayari yung death, nangyayari ang sickness, accident, disability, di lang natin alam kung kailan. So, ang pinaka-importante natin na gawin kapag nagpa-financial planning tayo, pagpaplanuhin natin yung finances natin, ha, is for us to protect our wealth first, okay? Kasi, if you get you know, sick, if you get into an accident, I mean, wala ka na na, na mag-provide para sa sarili mo ng savings or investments na yun, diba? Uh, to protect your wealth. And then, yun ka, if you die early, paano makakontinue yung income para sa family mo? If you were not able to protect your wealth, okay? So, im- imbes na kapag nagkasakit ka, ibenta mo yung mga properties para lang sustain or mabayaran yung hospitalization, make sure that you use, okay, the the tools necessary for you to be able to protect your wealth. And then, wealth accumulation. So, ito na expected events. Alam mo naman na magre-retire ka. Alam mo din na kapag naging parents ka is that you will have to fund the education of your kids. Okay? So, importante muna na maprotektahan mo yung income mo para if in case you die, if if you get, you know, into an accident or if you get sick, protected yung wealth mo. Intact pa rin yung savings and investments mo intak pa din yung para sa education ng anak mo, intak pa rin yung para sa retirement mo. Okay? And then, dagdagan mo pa. And then, wealth distribution, which is sa estate planning. So, pag naka, pag ipoint ka na para sa retirement and education din ng mga anak mo, syempre, yung mga sobra mo pang savings or your kikitain, um, ibibili mo ng iba't ibang properties pa yan or iba't ibang investments. So, ang pinahala sa financial planning pinapid natin is for you to be able to distribute um, your wealth in a way na hindi maging burden din sa iyong mga pagpapamanahan, diba? Okay? Kasi nga may estate tax na kailangan bayaran. So, later on in life, once you have amassed, you know, talagang wealth in your life, then you also have to plan on how you're going to distribute it na hindi magiging burden para sa mga anak mo or sa mga beneficiaries mo na tatanggap ng iyong estate. Okay? So, tandaan nyo itong financial planning pyramid na to, na nauuna dito yung protection ng wealth natin. Kailangan natin protektahan kung ano man yung mga naiipon or naiinvest na natin ngayon. And then, we have to accumulate more wealth which is for us to be able to have a good retirement and for us to be able to fund the education of our kids. And then, later on, distribute our wealth diba, sa ating mga anak or sa mga pagpapamanahan natin. Now, what are you going to do now, okay, when it comes to getting sick or ha- getting into an accident or being disabled? So, let's say, for example, disabled, as you can see, monthly savings mo again is 5,000 every month. So, in 12 months, you'll have 60,000 pesos. So, let's say, for example, ang HMO mo naman ay with MaxiCare up to 200,000 pesos. Okay, ginawa ko example si MaxiCare kasi siya yung pinakakilala na HMO. Okay, so in in one year, okay, kung 30 years old ka na kumuha ng iyong MaxiCare or HMO payment mo ay 3,689 pesos and 33 cents, ba? In five years, syempre tataas yan. Tumataas kasi ang payment sa HMO mo habang tumatanda ka din. Nag-iiba sa age. So, in five years, ang magiging payment mo na would be 4,421 pesos and 33 cents every month for you to have a 200,000 pesos na maximum benefit limit. Meaning to say, ito yung pwede mong um, i-bias hospital using your um, HMO hanggang 200,000 pesos lang. More than that, out of pocket na yon. Ikaw na. Kung umabot ng 500,000 ang bill mo sa hospital, you'll have to show that the 300,000 pesos. So, as you can see on the table, hanggang 20 years, pwede ka mag-ipon ng 5,000 pesos every month. Okay? Para maipon mo to. 
Okay, so, so in 20 years, kung inilalagay mo yung pera mo sa investments na may 10% interest, you'll have 3,828,484 pesos and 55 cents, di ba? Compared sa saving ito na bank or time deposit. Now, ang problema, what if, ha? What if ulit? Hindi ka umabot ng 20 years. Di ba? Nagkasakit ka na. Or in 10 years time, nagkasakit ka na. Or in 5 years time, nagkasakit ka na. Or in 1 year time, nagkasakit ka. And you only have... Uh, 63,351 pesos and 41 cents. Plus, kahit idagdag pa natin na meron kang HMO, which is 200,000 pesos. Paano kung ang bill mo sa hospital is 500,000? Saan mo kukunin yung pambabayad mo pa dun sa kulang? ba? Now, here's what you can do. Okay? You can protect yourself from accident, from disability, and from sickness by getting a health insurance. So, yun naman po yung purpose ng health insurance. Siya yung magpo-protect sa'yo sa financial burden if ever na magkasakit ka or ma-accidente ka or ma-disabled ka. Now, here is a sample computation for a health insurance. So, ang client natin, again, ang ginawa kong sample is a female and 30 years old siya with healthy non-smoker. Binibigyan natin ng emphasis dito yung healthy at saka non-smoker kasi Kailangan maging healthy ka, okay, kapag nag-apply ka for life insurance. Kasi dyan tinitingnan kung qualified ka pa ba to be given a health insurance or a life insurance. So as you can see here, ito yung mga benefits, okay. Meron tayong katagin advanced critical illness benefit. Depende po sa plan. Again, depende sa plan. Kaya importante na you do a financial planning with your financial advisor. Kasi hindi, hindi tayo lahat pare-pareho. May mga iba't iba tayong uh, needs. So, magkakaroon ng iba't iba computation. But this is just a sample computation for you to have an idea sa health insurance kung ano ba yung pwede mo makuha. So, sa advanced critical illness benefit, you will have a face amount of 2 million. Meaning to say, eto yung amount, okay, that you are covered for if, if in case magkaroon ka ng critical illness. Okay, magkakaroon ka ng 2 million pesos na pwede mong pambayad sa hospital, sa mga medical bills mo. And then, kung since female siya, merong female cancer benefit. So, if ma-diagnose ka ng mga cancer na para lang sa mga babae, kaya ka female cancer, meron kang 500,000 pesos, okay, that you can spend for your chemotherapies. And then, we have the early stage critical illness benefit. Ito yung na-diagnose ka earlier. Mga, kunyari ko sa cancer, uh, nasa stage 2 ka pa lang, uh, meron kang 500,000 pesos for that. Kasi pwede mag-advance siya sa stage 4, de ba? So, meron ka na kagad na 500,000 pesos. And then, we have the waiver of premium as well, which is included in this plan. Again, very important to kasi anything can happen. Paano kapag ma-disabled ka hindi mo na kayang bayaran yung premium mo dahil nga um, nagkasakit ka sin totally and permanently disabled ka. So, si insurance company na po yung magtutuloy ng pagbabayad ng iyong premium, which is a good thing kasi may sumasalo sa'yo, ba? So, nakikita nyo rin po yung computation dito ng premium. etong premium nito, ito yung babayaran mo para maging enforce yung policy or para magkaroon ka ng coverage. Okay? So, ang monthly premium for this kind of plan is 4,403 pesos and 38 cents. So, imagine, yung isi-save mo na 5,000 every month ko sa banko or sa investments, ba? Pag dito mo inilagay sa ganitong health insurance plan, meron ka kagad 2 million Okay? If in case, in one year time, magkasakit ka, magkaroon ka ng cancer, may 2 million ka na just by paying the premium of 4,403 pesos and 38 cents. Yun po yung kaibahan, yun po yung difference ng pag-iipon sa sarili mo compared to getting a health insurance plan for yourself. Kasi, sa bibitawan mo na 4,403 pesos and 38 cents, ang kapalit nun ay 2 million para sa critical illness benefit, pero pang female cancer benefit na 500,000 pesos. ba? Pero kung ikaw lang yung mag in one year time, kapag ikaw ay nagkasakit, hanggang dun lang. Kung, kung hanggang saan lang yung ipon mo, hanggang dun lang yung pera na aabutin or kakayanin na papayas sa hospital or medical bills mo. So, pwede nyo pong bayaran itong ganitong klaseng plan ng annual or semi-annual or quarterly as you can see here on the screen. Okay. Now, for the expected events naman, again, for the education of your kids, and also for your retirement. Okay. So, kung parents ka, I'm sure iniisip po na magkano bang gagastusin mo kapag nag-college na yung anak mo. 
Okay, so as you can see here on my screen, these are the projected annual tuition fees from selected universities nationwide. So, projection lang po ito, okay, na pwede nating pagbasihan din kung magkano ba aabutin ang tuition fee ng anak ko by this year kung magka-college na siya, di ba? At kung sa ganitong school. So, you can actually get a copy from your financial advisor para mapag-aralan nyo of how you're going to fund your kid's education. Now, have you prepared for your child's future? So, if in case po, ah, nasa 2026 or 2027 na mag-aaral yung anak mo ng college, at four-year course yung gusto niyang kuhain, so, eto po yung kailangan yung paghandaan. Okay? So, let's say, for example, sa De La Salle University, sa DLSU, ang tuition fee for four-year course, aabutan ng 1,942,920 pesos. Isama mo pa dyan yung allowances na 500 pesos. Sasabihin ng five days na mag-aaral yan. Sabi natin, 480,000 abutin. School projects, kasi nagkakaroon mo talaga ng school projects. So, ito, ano lang po ito, ah. Figure lang po na inilagay natin na included, kunyari sa mga school projects na gagawin nila. So, ang total na dapat mong pag-ipunan ko sa DLS yung mag-aaral yung anak mo is 2,482,920 pesos. Okay? Now, graduate po ako ng FEU and, I mean, magandang school, din na, magandang school naman ng FEU. So, if in case sa FEU mo gusto pag-aralan yung anak mo, kailangan meron kang 1,569,656 pesos. Okay? So, ang tanong, have you prepared for that kung sa 2026-2027 mag-aaral yung anak mo? Now, what if you have more than one kid? Siyempre, naman na tayo, isa lang yung anak. Okay? So, ito yung mga tuition fee per child. If in case, na sa FAU gusto mag-aaral ng anak mo, yung limang anak mo doon mag-aaralin, sabihin na natin, okay, 1,569,656 yung kailangan mo ipunin, di ba? Eh, times 5 mo yan aabot ng 7,848,280 pesos. Or more than that pa, kasi syempre iba-iba yung age niya. So, i-compute pa pala natin yung different um, ages nila, different years who can sila mag-aaral. Pwede maging more than that pa. Okay? But for the sake of the computation, sample computation here, let's say, pare-pareho sila na mag magka-college, okay, at that time. So, lima. Ito yung kailangan pag-ipunan. Now, what will happen? Paano kung hindi ka nakapag-ipon? Anong, anong mangyayari sa anak mo? Paano kung gusto niyang university? Eh, sa Harvard pala, o kaya sa ibang bansa, ba? So, anong mangyayari? ba? Minsan na nangyayari, mapag-aralin na lang natin sila dun sa university or college na kung saan kakasya yung budget natin or kakasya yung uh, sasahurin natin ng pambabayad ng kanilang tuition fee, ba? So, pag minsan gusto din ng anak natin na mag-doktor o kaya mag-abogado, kaso wala naman tayong ipon para doon, i-convince na lang siguro natin yung anak natin na kung ano na lang yung available na course na for a year o kaya mag-vocational course ka na lang. Di ba may mga dreams tayo para sa mga anak natin? And I'm sure yung mga anak natin, meron na rin silang dreams by that time. Kaya ito yung, ito yung gusto nalang kuhain na course, ito nalang gusto mag-aral. But, because wala tayong budget para doon sa university na gusto nilang pasukan, hindi kaya ng, ng powers natin, yung income natin na doon sila pag-aralin. They will have to adjust their dreams for us, ba? Kasi hindi tayo nag-ipon, hindi tayo nag-prepare para sa education nila. So, ang mangyayari, kung saan na lang pwede or kung saan na lang kaya, or better yet, yung iba, hindi na lang mag-aaral or hindi na makakapag-aral kasi... You know, you did not prepare for it. Wala kang pera para doon. Wala kang pera para sa pang-college pang nila. Okay? So, yun ang mga pwedeng mangyari. Now, what are you going to do? So, let's say, for example, isa na mo magka-college na, ang tuition fee sa FEU, kung saan siya mag-aaral, is 1,569,656. So, ngayon pa lang, mag-ipon ka na every month ng 50,000 pesos. Para in 12 months, you'll have 600,000. Now, if you save it in the bank, you'll have 600,243 pesos and 81 cents. If you put it in investments, you'll have 633,514 pesos and 6 cents. ba? That's in one year. And if in five years, tayo pa mag-aaral yung anak mo, mapapag-ipunan mo pa naman yung tuition fee niya sa FEU. ba? At saka yung magagasusin niya. So, magkakaroon ka ng 1,803,435 pesos and 47 cents. 
kung isa-save mo lang sa bangko, doon mo lang ilalagay, ha? Or kung i-invest mo naman siya, mas malaki-laki. Halos nasa 2,342,471 pesos and 43 cents. So, kaya na. Kaya na na pag-aralan sa FEU at kaya nang i-sustain pati mga allowances at mga kung ano pang school projects dyan, ba diba? Now, ang tanong, okay, kung, let's say for example, ang objective mo is to save 1 million para sa education fund ng anak mo. Now, there's a building here, okay? Bawat building, okay, from first floor up to fourth floor, may equivalent na 100,000 pesos. So, pat- pataas ng pataas, nakakaipon ka, hanggang sa 10th floor, meron ka ng 1 million, okay? So, ikaw na magulang, may dalawa kang option na pwedeng pagpilian kung paano mo uh, isa-save or paano mo pag-iipunan tong education fund na to. And yung objective mo lang is to, to save 1 million nga. So, pwede mong gamitin yung stairs. Kasi lahat naman ng building may stairs, ba? Okay. So, yung savings and investments, kagaya ng illustration natin kanina, yun yung stairs. Nag-represent ng stairs. Mag-accumulate ka ng funds, okay, using savings and investments para ma-hit mo yung objective goal mo na makapag ipon ng 1 million para sa education fund ng anak mo. What if, again, what if magkaroon ka ng heart attack on the fifth floor? Okay? So, sa fifth floor, 500,000 pa lang equivalent nun. So, meaning to say, yung savings more investments mo, nasa 500,000 pa lang. If, if na heart attack ka, or if you die, as in, wala na, totally gone ka na talaga. Ang may iwan mo lang would be the 500,000 pesos. Eh, ang objective mo, 1 million para sa education fund ng anak mo. So, kulang pa, ba? Now, there's another option that you can use, which is the elevator, which represents the life insurance policy. Okay? So, ito naman yung creation of wealth or, or creation for, your, for the education fund of your kid. Okay, kasi ang elevator, kapag sumakay ka dyan, pag pinindot mo yung 10th floor, ba? iaakit ka nyan sa 10th floor kahit na anong mangyari. Kahit na maharta heart attack ka dyan, mamatay ka habang nasa elevator ka, basta na-press mo yung 10th floor sa elevator, automatic 1 million pa rin. Okay, yung objective mo... Yung objective mo na makapag-save up ng 1 million para sa education fund ng anak mo, maa-achieve mo pa rin using the option of having a life insurance policy. So, yun po yung magkaibang concept natin. Parehong nasa building, parehong floor na may tigo 100,000 hanggang sa maipon yung 1 million. Pero, magkaiba po yung pwede maging result if in case something happens to you. So, yun po yung dapat nating paghandaan din at dapat din natin pag-isipan. Okay? Now, here's what you can do. So, here's a sample computation of an education plan using a VUL plan. Okay? Ang client natin ay female. She's 30 years old, healthy, non-smoker. Yung age ng anak niya ay 10 years old and it's a 5 years to pay plan. Gusto niya 5 years lang siya na magbabayad. So, ito yung illustration. Yung benefits na makukuha niya, may education payout every year for 4 years. So, kung 4-year course yon, every year meron siyang matatanggap na 500,000 pesos para sa tuition or education ng anak niya. Then, my life insurance coverage siya na 1,895,026 pesos. So, eto po, yung insurance na to, important to dito sa component na to. Kasi kung babalikan natin kanina yung stairs and elevator concept, okay, if ever na hindi na niya abutin yung 5 years, hindi na siya makapagbayad ng, ng 2 years, namatay na siya hagad may receive yung anak niya na 1,895,026 pesos para sa education fund niya, okay? And also, the education um, payout then na 500,000 pesos, kumbaga included na yan sa plan na to. Sigurado na na may 500,000 pesos para dun sa tuition fee ng anak niya, okay? So, yun yung difference po na kapag ikaw lang nagsisave mag-isa sa bank, hindi mo kasi alam kung ano yung pwedeng mangyari, diba? Pwedeng, I mean, magkasakit ka nga or pwedeng mamatay ka na maaga, so, hindi mo na mapag-iipunan yung education plan ng anak mo. But with this kind of education plan, okay, which is, yung isa, mag-iipun ka ng 50,000 every month. Ito, may monthly premium ka lang na 32,981 pesos and 20 cents. Kung kaya naman ng budget mo, ha. Pero kung hindi naman kaya, may mga ibang education plan din naman na pwedeng 
i-propose sa'yo ng iyong financial advisor. So, depende talaga yan sa budget mo at kung magkano ba yung tinatarget mo. So, it's very important for you to do a financial planning with your financial advisor dahil dito na pag-uusapan kung paano ma-achieve yung goal mo, yung objective mo sa pagkuha ng isang plan. Okay? So, may annual premium. So, yung mode of payments, then you can pay it monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, annually, diba? Nasa sa'yo yan. Kung kaya ng budget mo na bayaran to annually or may naitabi ka na para sa education fund ng anak mo with this amount, then you can use that. And at least you will be sure that if anything happens to you, sigurado na merong fund pa din yung anak mo that they can use for further education. Now, are you prepared to retire comfortably? Okay, so ito na yung uh, another expected event in our lives na pag tumanda tayo, we have to prepare ourselves for retirement, di ba? And not just preparing ourselves for retirement. Siyempre, gusto natin mag-retire comfortably. Okay, yun yung nakaka-travel tayo. We have our own money. Hindi tayo maasa sa mga anak natin or hindi natin gagawin retirement income yung mga anak natin, di ba? Nasa kanil tayo kukuha. We want to be able to retire comfortably by being able to support ourselves. And for us to be able to enjoy traveling the world or doing what we want because we have the money for that, okay? Now, may tinatawag tayong inflation and I'm sure aware kayo sa inflation kung ano yung magiging effect nito. Let's say, for example, kung ikaw nag-grocery ka ngayon tapos ang amount ng ginagrocery mo nasa 100 pesos, kung nagsisave ka sa bank at binibigyan ka ng interest rate na 1% every year, pero ang average inflation rate ay nasa 5%. Dito pa lang, yung sinave mo na may 1% interest, tapos yung pera, pera mo biglang magkakaroon inflation rate na nasa 5%. Kulang na kulang yung naiipon mo sa bank o sa earnings, di ba, na idadagdag doon sa nasave mo sa 5%. So, ang mangyayari, next year, yung 100 pesos na ginagrocery mo, hindi na yun 100 pesos. Para, para, para ganyan pa din kadami yung maggrocery mo, nasa 150 pesos na siya, hindi na siya 100 pesos kasi dahil sa inflation. ba diba? Kaya nga, lagi natin naririg, tumataas ang mga bilihin, tumataas ang presyo. ba diba? Before naabutan ko yung pamasahe sa jeep, nasa 2 pesos lang. Ngayon, na, magkano na bang pamasahe sa jeep? ba diba? After what? Um, after 25 years, 30 years, nasa 8 pesos, 9 pesos na pamasaya sa jeep. ba diba? So, yung value ng pera natin, bumababa, tapos, kung mga yung mga bilihin, tumataas. So, what are we going to do about this? Do you realize how inflation affects your retirement plan? So, let's say, for example, today, ha, ang ginagasos mo every month ay 25,000 pesos. Yung inflation rate, in 15 years, 52,000 pesos na, okay, yung, yung equivalent amount ng, ng gagasasin mo, hindi na 25,000 pesos. So, meaning to say, kung 25,000 pesos ngayon niyan, lahat yung expenses mo, lahat ang ginagasas mo, in 15 years, kailangan mo na ng 52,000 pesos kasi hindi na magkakasya yung 25,000 pesos. Kung nasa 50,000 pesos naman yung monthly expenses mo, by the time na In 15 years, 104,000 pesos na ang equivalent nun. And then kung 75,000 pesos a month ang ginagasas mo, by the time na mag-15 years na, 156,000 pesos na po. Okay? So, if in, if you will be retiring in 15 years or in 20 years, ang dapat mong paghandaan ay kung magkano yung amount ng pera na kakailanganin mo during the time na magre-retire ka na. Kasi hindi pareho yan. Hindi, hindi yung iniipon mo 25,000 pesos ngayon, eh same amount or same value pa din yan in 15 years. So, dapat mong dagdagan kung magkano yung iniipon mo ngayon. ba diba? Now, what will happen if you have no retirement fund? At may mga anak ka na sa kanila ka lang aasa. Ang mangyayari sa yun yan, kapag wala kang retirement fund or kayo ng asawa mo walang retirement fund, yung mga anak mo, pagpapasapasahan kayo na parang bola. Kasi para sa kanila, magiging financial burden ka. ba? Diba? Kasi may kanya-kanya na rin silang pamilya eh. ba? Diba? Kung may mga anak sila na dapat din nilang sustentuhan, na binubuhay, or may asawa na, na kailangan ding um, supportahan, buhayin. ba diba, ikaw, magiging financial burden ka kung wala kang retirement fund. Kasi 
for sure, sa kanila mo kukunin yung panggasos mo, di ba? Pa- sa kanila mo kukunin lahat ng pangangailangan mo. And ang mangyayari sa'yo niyan, wala kang peace of mind. And at the same time, nakakababa ng moral yun, di ba? Pag gano'n na parang unwanted ka or hindi mo alam kung saan mo ilulugar ang sarili mo. Though I'm not saying na lahat ng mga anak ganito, but in reality, most of the time, this is what happens, di ba? Sa mga uh, elders natin, kapag wala silang fund for, for themselves, hindi nila kayo maging independent. Unlike yung mga iba na napaghandaan ng retirement, kaya na mag-travel on their own, they can live on their own because they're able to support themselves kasi meron silang pera. Meron silang retirement fund for that. So, what are you going to do? Let's say, for example, your current age is at 30 years old. So, you can save monthly ng 5,000 pesos and in 12 months, you'll have 60,000 pesos. And then, 10 years, okay? For 10 years, nagde-deposit ka sa, sa bank or naka-time deposit or mag invest ka sa um, stocks or mutual funds and then it's earning 10% interest. Okay, kung 30 years old ka ngayon, in 35 years ka magre-retire kasi 65 ka na by that time. So, ito yung amount ng retirement fund mo, ba? Kung sa bako ka lang talaga mag-iipon, hindi ka kasya yung 613,673 pesos and 20 cents. Okay, so I'm sure ikaw na mismo nakakita na I don't think you will consider na sa banko mo ilagay yung retirement ano mo, fund mo. Sa time deposit, pwede rin, pero sa tingin mo, haka siya yung 1,944,895 pesos and 33 cents. Hindi, ba? So, sa investment, it's a much better option kasi you'll have 12,451,931 pesos and 75 cents. Now, ang tanong, marunong ka bang mag-invest? Kasi kung hindi ka marunong mag-invest, wala hang idea baka hindi mo gawin to or baka hindi mo magawa na mag-invest for, you know, 35 years at maabot mo tung retirement fund na to na worth 12 million plus, ba? So, here's what you can do. Okay. Um, eto, uh, papakita ko lang sa inyo yung difference ng investment sa life insurance, okay? Sa investments kasi, most of the time, we have to have a big capital for us to be able to earn interest. Diba? Now, you provide the capital to earn interest and then you can grow rich with risk and, you know, volatility. Uh, volatile kasi yung market, hindi eh. mo na alam kung kailan tataas or uh, babagsak yung presyo ng um, stocks, diba? So, in, hindi mo, hindi mo alam. Pero, yung investment, sabi ko nga, kung marunong ka dyan, you'll be able to save up for your retirement. Now, with life insurance naman, ang binabayaran mo dyan is that you pay the interest for you to create capital. Kasi automatic, di ba, sabi ko nga, magbigay ka ng 2,000 pesos and then you will have, you know, a life insurance coverage of 1,500,000 or 2, 2 million pesos. Depende sa kung magkano, di ba, ang aabutin ng iyong life insurance plan. But, you're, you're creating uh, a capital by just paying the interest. Hindi, hindi mo kailangan na magkaroon ng malaking capital agad just for you to earn interest. So, with life insurance, you can grow rich, steady, and safely. Kasi, yun nga yan eh, um, may income protection na rin siyang kasama, and safe ka na kahit anong mangyari sa'yo, meron na kagad, ano yun, meron na kagad life insurance coverage that will protect your income. Okay? And, ang nakikita nyo kasi dito is yung time, di ba? So, napaka-importante nung time natin. Kasi, paano kung wala ka ng time para mag-invest? Para pag wala ka pang malaking capital, para mag-earn ka ng interest agad-agad, ba? So, it's very important for us to consider time when it comes to our investments. And with the life insurance, as I've said, you are paying the interest to create capital. Meron kagad kapalit na malaking amount yan. And you can grow rich, steady, and safely. Okay? Now, this is a sample computation of savings investments. Now, let's say, for example... Uh, nakapag-ipon ka na. At 30 years old, you have 500,000 pesos. So, you can put it as an investment agad-agad, ba? So, pwede mo rin siyang invest plus still with the life insurance just to make sure, diba, that whatever happens talaga, um, your, your investment will still be covered. So, as you can see in this illustration, okay, on the day one of your investment, depende sa plan na kukuhain mo. So, we have single pay variable life plan. Okay, that you could also use as a tool for, for your savings and investment. So, as you can see here on the table, after 35 years, kung mag ka na by the age of 65, may 14,567,017 pesos ka na 
for your retirement. So, malaki-laki na yan, di ba? Nag-invest ka lang ng 500,000 pesos kung may naipon ka na na ganyang kalaking kapital. So, ito na yung interest na kikitain mo. That would help you for your retirement. It would be your retirement fund. And at the same time, it's also, if ever, na hindi ka naabutin ng 30 years of age or hindi ka naabutin sa 35 years, ang importante siya, it has a life insurance component also na mapupunta rin naman sa mga beneficiaries mo if ever na hindi mo pa nagamit yung iyong living benefits or yung interest na kinita ng iyong investment. And here's another sample computation for retirement using a VUL plan. Ito naman yung regular pay, okay? So, 10 years mong babayaran. Ang client natin dito, for, for an example, is a female, 30 years old, and again, healthy non-smoker. So, ito yung mga benefits naman kapag ito yung klaseng plan ang ginamit mo for your retirement. You have the life insurance coverage, which is 500,000 pesos. Tapos, may accidental death benefit ka din na 500,000 pesos. You also have the enhanced critical illness of 500,000 pesos. And again, total disability waiver. Yung mawi-wave ang premiums if ever na matotally or permanently disabled ka. And yung retirement or investment fund mo at age 65, if you will use this kind of plan, which is 10 years to pay, so at 10% interest earned, meron kang 9,454,303 pesos. Okay? So malahalahan na rin po yan for your retirement fund as long as you will be consistent in paying your monthly premium of 5,173 pesos and 78 cents. So, kung ikaw-compare mo din, di ba, sa 5,000 pesos, which is um, saving in a bank or in a time deposit or investments, kung hindi ka marunong pang mag-invest sa stocks or you, you don't know how to do your own investing, then you could use this kind of plan kasi may fund manager naman who will manage the funds in this kind of plan. So, what, hindi ka na mahahasal or mas stress sa kakaisip or kung paano mo pag-aaralan yung pag-i-invest. Kasi may mga taong ganun, they, they don't have the time or they don't have the interest to actually learn on how to invest in stocks or mutual funds or, you know, all these in investing options where they could actually put their money into. So, this is a plan that you could use for you to be able to save up for your retirement. And again, iba-iba po tayo ng magiging goal, objective, iba-iba tayo ng magiging um, plan. So, it's really important for you to do a financial planning with your financial advisor. Paulit-ulit ko po siyang sinasabi kasi ito po talaga yung purpose nitong video presentation na to is for you to understand why a financial planning is important and why it's important for you to set an appointment with your financial advisor to talk to them about your dreams, your plans, your goals, your objective so that they could come up with a plan that will fit you. So nakikita nyo po dito sa table ko yung total annual premium, yung semi-annual na pwede nyo bayaran and quarterly and yung monthly. So again, if you wanna save up for your retirement, 5,000 pesos, di ba? Pwede mong itabi yan. And meron ka pang life insurance coverage. Now, the question is, what about your age? Again, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina doon, sa investment siya sa life insurance. It's very critical yung time. Kasi yung time, you know, yun yung pinakamahalagang component when we are investing. Bakit? Kasi when you're young, 20 years old, look at the retirement fund that you could get when you're at age 65. It's 26,142,835 pesos. Now, if you start saving or investing at the age of 30, ito yung amount na pwede mong makuha as your retirement fund at age 65. 9,454,303 pesos. Eh, paano kung 40 years old ka na doon mo lang na-realize na gusto mong, gusto mong mag-save up for your retirement? you'll only have 3,483,209 pesos. Well, it's good, better than nothing. But, again, isipin mo yung inflation during the time na nag-retire ka na, you think kakayanin pa yung retirement fund na yan if ever na tumagal ka pa more than 10 years or 20 years, di ba, at your retirement age. So, kaya na ba yan? Now, these computations are based on an assumed fund earning rates at 10%. Okay, a monthly savings of 5,000 pesos for 10 years as well. And you get a life insurance and critical illness of 500,000 pesos. So, just look at this. And if you're at your 20s right now and you're watching this video, look at how much you can get for your retirement fund if you start investing now, if you start saving now. And if you're a 30-year-old who's watching this, Okay, it's not too late, but it's it's good to start now. 
kalaban natin dito is time, ba? Diba? So, the earlier you save and invest, the bigger the amount that you will get during your retirement uh, age. So, if you're 40 years old and you're watching watching this, better late than never, ba? Diba? So, mas maganda pa rin na uh, pag-ipunan mo na rin ang retirement mo kahit 40 years old ka na. It's, it's, it's better to be late than never. Pwede mo naman taasan ng iyong monthly savings kung gusto mong habulin, ba diba? yung ipo ng isang 20-year-old at saka 30-year-old. Okay, so talk to yourself right now and think think through, okay, kung kung bakit importante na mapag-ipunan mo na yung retirement fund mo. So, as you can see, we have different solutions, okay, to your financial needs. So, so bawat stages mo sa life ay may mga financial needs ka nakakailanganin. And, these are the solutions that we have. Income protection, for you to protect your income and your life insurance. Health protection is the health insurance. Education plan, retirement plan, and estate planning as well. So, for your savings and investments. Now, what are your financial needs? Again, balikan natin. We have expected events in our lives, diba? So, ito yung mga alam mo na mangyayari sa buhay mo kapag nag anak ka, syempre, papaaralin mo yan. So, education for your kids. Or if you are a grandparents, you want to give them, you know, you want to support them with their education. And then, retirement. Diba? Kung hindi ka namatay na maaga, syempre, abutin mo yung old age, magre-retire ka. So, these are the expected events in your life that you have to prepare for, that you have to plan for. And you have financial needs, Okay when this expected event happens in your life. So, sa education, kailangan mo na education plan. Kapag sa retirement, you have to have a retirement plan and you have to have savings and investments. Para sa mga unexpected events naman in your life, syempre, hindi mawawala dyan yung death kasi lahat naman tayo dyan papunta. Hindi lang talaga natin alam kung kailan. So, very unexpected yan kapag dumating. And then, sickness, accident, disability, it's unexpected din. Hindi rin natin alam kung mangyayari ba sa atin yan, or kung kailan mangyayari, if ever na mangyayari man sa atin yan. So, these are your financial needs when this unexpected events happens in your life. Okay, so you need income protection. That's the life insurance. Again, the income protection, it replaces your income. If you die early, it will support your family's needs even when you're gone. And then for sickness, accident, and disability, you, ha- you have health insurance and accidental insurance that will protect you from the financial burden okay, that you will incur if ever this unexpected events happen in your life. So why do we need financial planning? So after ko na discuss sa inyo yung mga unexpected events at sa expected events and you know some of the things that can happen and eventually might happen, at kung ano yung pwede natin gawin, let's go back to this question. Why do you need financial planning? Now, if you have a smart financial planning, let's go back dun sa mga pero, what if, at mga paano natin sa buhay. So, pag may financial planning ka, kakayanin mo ang gastos kung madiagnose ka with cancer. Secured ang future ng family mo kahit wala ka na. May peace of mind ka habang may sakit ka dahil may health insurance ka. Kasama sa plan mo ang total waiver of premium kaya tuloy pa rin ang insurance policy mo. Prepared ka para sa panahong may sakit ka at walang work? May accident insurance ka? At ready ka na for your retirement, ba? Diba? So yung mga tanong natin ng mga what if, pero paano? Pag meron kang financial planning, if you have all the solutions for your financial needs, then ito yung mga magiging kasagutan do sa mga what if mo, mga paano mo, tsaka pero. Diba? So, I'm sure mas gugustuhin mo naman na ganito yung maging sagot mo kapag natanong ng utak mo, natanong ng pamilya mo yung mga what if na yan. So, again, ito po yung financial planning pyramid natin. It's very important that you have to have an income protection, health insurance, and accident insurance to protect your wealth. Kung ano man yung pinag-iipunan mo ngayon at kung ano yung binibuild mo na wealth mo, kailangan mo siyang protektahan muna. And then, you prepare to accumulate more wealth for the retirement and education. Diba? Magsisave ka na ngayon para sa retirement and education. 
And then, wealth distribution. Diba? Kung naplano man ng maayos ang iyong finances, then you will be able to come to this point where you, you'll be able to distribute your wealth sa iyong mga beneficiaries or sa kung sino yung gusto mong pamanahan. Because you have the wealth to distribute. Okay, so let's take a look at the savings and expenses mindset, okay? Kasi para ma-achieve natin to, kailangan maintindihan mo kung paano ba mag-save at kung anong gagawin sa mga expenses. Kasi normally, ang mga tao, inuuna ang expenses bago ang pagsisave. Kaya hindi minsan nakakapag-save para sa retirement, para sa education ng anak, at hindi rin nakakakuha ng life insurance kasi yung thinking nila, it's another expense on our part and I can't afford na yung expenses na yan. Okay? So, we have what we call the 20-50-30 rule. Wherein, dapat bayaran mo muna yung sarili mo kasi ikaw na mo yung nagpakapagod para kitain yung pera na yun, di ba? So, kung, let's say, for example, you have your income, yung 20% noon i-save mo muna at invest mo muna. Para sa future self mo yan. Kasi, kung hindi ka magsisave at pag invest ngayon, paano na yung future self mo? Diba? So, unahin mo muna yun. And then, 50% is, is, and then 50% is for the needs. Ito yung mga bills, ito yung mga expenses na kailangan talaga natin bayaran. Kasi, wala naman tayong choice kung hindi magbayad ng Meralco, magbayad ng mga kung anong bills natin, water bill, diba? Magbayad ng mortgage or house loan or car loan, kung ano man yung dapat natin bayaran. And then, 30% is for your wants. Siyempre, gusto mo rin naman ipamper yung sarili mo. Hindi mo naman gustong i-deprive ang sarili mo dahil sa nag-iipon ka, diba? You also have to be able to finance for your wants. Pero, eto dapat yung sequence nung paggasos mo ng iyong income. Mauna mo na yung pagsisave at pag-invest. And then, for the expenses. And then, for your wants. Now, what is the role of a financial advisor? Okay, so, I'm sure maraming nag-iisip or nagtatanong, ano bang role talaga ng financial advisor? Be- para lang ba mabentahan ako ng life insurance? Para lang pagkakitaan niya ako? I'm sure, pumapasok sa isip niya yung mga yan. Pero, dapat din siguro natin maintindihan kung anong role talaga ng financial advisor sa buhay mo. If in case you decide na, oo nga, importante pala sa akin ng life insurance, gusto kong magkaroon ng income protection or gusto kong magkaroon ng health protection, or gusto kong i-plan yung retirement ko, or gusto kong mag-save para sa education fund ng anak ko. So, eto po ang role ng isang financial advisor, and how we can help you when it comes to your financial planning. Una-una, we help you to have a regular savings by the calendar. Every time that you will be paying your monthly premium or quarterly premium, nagkakaroon ka ng regular savings habang binabayaran mo yung policy mo with us. Expert investment of your savings. Kaya we do financial needs analysis, di ba? We do financial planning with you. Para alam natin kung saan natin pwede ilagay. Hindi lang naman para mabentahan kita ng insurance or para magkaroon ako ng commission. Kasi financial advisors are more than that. Kaya nga sila tinawag na financial advisors because we aim to give you an, an honest and expert um, investment for your savings. And then cash for emergencies and or opportunities. So we help you we help you to actually create emergency funds and create opportunities for your money to grow. So if you're paying a home mortgage right now, then as financial advisors, we will be able to help you to have it paid in full if ever you die or something happens to you, diba? Uh, we can help you on how you're going to be able to pay for the house amortization or kung sino man yung maiiwan mo to be able to pay for that. So you may tinatawag so, meron tayong tinatawag na MRI, Mortgage Redemption Insurance. And I'm sure na-encounter na ito na mga bumibili ng bahay kasi nare-require na ito ng mga bank. Para hindi naman mahila or mahatak yung bahay mo. Kapag nawala ka na, so saan titira yung mga anak mo, di ba? Kung hindi pa nabayaran in full, tas iilit ng banko. So, we can help you with that. And immediate estate creation at death. So, ito yung sabi ko na once you die, merong pera na mapupunta para sa pamilya mo for, for all their expenses and uh, for all the things that they have to pay, including estate taxes. Protection for the whole family. Kung natatanda niyo umbrella kanina, if ever 
na dumating yung sickness, accident, or disability, if you have health insurance, then you could protect your whole family from the financial burden or financial loss, di ba, na maghahagilap ng pera para sa hospitalization or pagpapagaling ng mahal mo sa buhay. Funding source for business continuation when business owner dies. So we have that kind of plan wherein you could be protected, especially when you have a business and then if, if you're gone, then naapektuhan yung, yung finances or continuity ng business, di ba? So, we could also help you with that, na mag, mag-create ng funding source para siguro duhin na may pampondo pa rin para sa pagpapatuloy ng business mo. Assurance of children's education. This is so important, especially if if you really die tapos hindi ka nakapag-ipon or hindi pa sapat yung inipon mo, di ba? Paano, paano may pagpapatuloy ng anak mo yung pag-aaral niya? So, as, as financial advisors, we are able to help you um, assure your, your children's education. And income option, arrangement limited years or for life. Ito yung may mga options tayo or plans tayo na pwedeng i-offer na meron kang magiging um, monthly or yearly na para income para kang nagpe-pension. And then guaranteed income during retirement years. Mahalaga dito kasi ayaw mo for sure na pagpasapasahan ka na parang bola ng mga anak mo or na mga kamag-anak mo, pag alam nilang wala kang retirement fund, di ba? So, pag meron kang income, you can support yourself, hindi mo kailangan mamalimos or mag- magmakaawa na tanggapin ka ng kung sino man sa pamilya mo para lang alagaan ka. Hindi ka magiging financial burden para sa kanila. Continuing income for the family. Again, if you're a breadwinner, kapag nawala ka, mawawala yung income. So, we are able to help you make sure na yung income na yun, kahit wala ka na, eh, continuous pa rin na mapoprovide sa pamilya na maiiwan mo. Peace of mind through financial security. I think this is, you know, the most important. Na kapag meron kang life insurance, may income protection ka, you have your health insurance in place, your retirement plan is in place, your education plan for your kids is in place, makakatulog ka with peace of mind at night kasi alam mo, financially secured ka at yung pamilya mo. Diba? Hindi, hindi ka mag-iisip ng mga what if paano. Kasi may sagot eh. Merong sagot doon sa mga what if paano na yun when it comes to your finances. Now, I'll just like to share with you na hindi po lahat ng gustong kumuha ng life insurance will be approved. So, you have to understand that you actually apply for life insurance. Hindi po siya yung parang binibigay na lang sa inyo. Hindi po rikit kinukulit kayo ng financial advisors na kakilala nyo, na kaibigan nyo, kapamilya nyo, na kumuha ng life insurance. is parang binibigay na lang niya na pagbigay sa inyo, eh, approve agad. Hindi po. There are two most important factors considered at getting life insurance. Sa lahat ng factors na consider sa pag-approve sa life insurance application nyo, eto po yung para sa akin yung two most important factors talaga. It's your age. Kasi, ang tanong dyan, can you still get a life insurance? And we have clients who really ask, kasi alam naman nila na if they're already in their 65, 70, or 18, malabo na makakuha ng life insurance. Kasi, uh, sobrang taas na nung risk sa'yo, ba? So, you have to, to consider that your age, okay, is an important factor in getting a life insurance. Kasi, pagtanda mo, at dun mo pala maisipan na kumuha ng life insurance or gusto mo dun pala mag-apply, baka hindi ka na pwede. And then your health. It's very important that you are still healthy when applying for a life insurance. You know why? Kasi if, if you're applying for a life insurance, kung kailan na-diagnose ka na with cancer or merong, meron ka na palang malubang sakit at dun mo na naisipan na mag-apply, you're not gonna get approved kasi malalaman at malalaman yan when you apply, okay? So it's, it's, it's very important that you understand right now that your age and your health are the most two important factors that is being considered getting a life insurance. Kung hindi ka na healthy, malamang sa malamang hindi ka na ma-approve for a life insurance application. So, ngayon pa lang, habang bata ka at habang healthy ka, kaya lagi sinasabi ng mga financial advisors, kumuha ng life insurance. Kasi, it might be too late for you, ba? And you need to remember, time is one thing that we are not guaranteed. Yung age natin, hindi naman yan bumabata eh. Di ba tumatanda talaga yan? At hindi natin mapipigilan yan. Every year, mag-birthday tayo. Every year, tatanda tayo. And ang health natin, hindi rin natin alam kung kailan tayo magkakasakit. Unexpected nga yun eh. Pwede ngayon, healthy ka, tas 
tomorrow, hindi ka na healthy and kung doon mo lang may isipan na mag-apply, wala na. Now, we need time to be able to do the following. Pay all your house loan, your car loans, save up for your kids' education, build your savings and investments, prepare for your retirement fund, and a lot more. Kasi marami pa tayong gustong gawin, ba? Diba? Habang buhay tayo, habang may time pa tayo para gawin itong mga to. Pero, what if you lose that time and you're not able to finish it? Kagaya ng mga in-explain ko kanina, paano kung hindi ka pa natapos na mag- mag-save para sa education ng anak mo, hindi ka pa tapos na bayaran yung house loan, or hindi ka pa talaga nakakapag-save para sa retirement mo, wala ka ng time to do that kasi it's either na kinuha ka na ni Lord or nagkasakit ka, aksidente ka, na-disabled ka, ba? Diba? Wala ka na magagawa. Hindi mo na may babalik yung time na yun. So, life insurance is time. The time you might not have. Okay? So, kung wala ka na nun, pero you have life insurance, that it can replace all those time that uh, you, you've lost or you will be losing if ever you you get sick, ba? Diba? Na hindi ka na makakapag-work. Now, if you need time, you need life insurance. Kung ngayon, di pa naman umaabot sa million-million yung pera na na-save mo. And again, kapag nagkasakit ka at wala kang health insurance, kahit yung mga millions more, yung mga properties mo, pwede mong maibenta para babayaran yung mga hospital bills mo kapag nagkasakit ka, ba? Diba? So, importante talaga that you have all those protections for yourself and for your family. Now, how do you apply for a life insurance? So, this is one thing that you have to bear in mind. You apply for a life insurance. It's not just being given to you. Okay? Ina-apply po yan at merong approval. So, pwede ka ma-approve or pwede ka rin ma-decline. Depende sa kung ano makikita sa application mo. Okay? So, first, you have to set an appointment with a financial advisor for a financial needs analysis. Kung sino man ang nag-send sa'yo ng video na to from our team, then I suggest you talk to her or to him set an appointment kung interesado ka to discuss about your financial needs. And then, choose and decide which plan fits your financial needs. Kasi after your financial needs analysis with your financial advisor, then you will be presented with proposals and plans of how we will be able to help you okay, for securing your family's future and also your finances. Then, you just have to choose and decide which plan. Okay? Now, if you're already decided on which plan plan you want to go for, then fill out the insurance application form given by your financial advisor and pay for your premium. Or you could actually do it online. Pwede yung financial advisor mo fill out ng application form online because we could already submit your application form uh, through online. And it's also important that you pay your premium. Pwede kasi nag-fill out ka ng application form mo pero hindi tatakbo yung approval niyan hanggat hindi mo binabayaran yung premium. So, pagkabayad mo ng premium and while your application for a life insurance is still in process, you will have a conditional cover. So, cover ka na during the time na pinaprocess yung life insurance mo. So, so you have to pay the premium para ma-process yung application mo for life insurance. And then, wait for your life insurance application to be approved by the insurance company where you applied for. So, eto po yung step-by-step na Pagdadaanan ninyo in applying for life insurance. So, what you need to do now is to talk to the financial advisor who sent you this video presentation. Set an appointment for a smart financial planning with your financial advisor. Ito yung pinaka-first step that you have to do now after watching this video if you understood everything that you have watched and if you realized the importance of having a smart financial planning. So to end this video presentation, all I have to say is that you have to be smart and you have to plan right. You can contact us on our Facebook page at Smart Financial Planning and with our Instagram account at Smart Financial Planning also. We also have our website www.smartfinancialplanning.info or you can contact me, SMS me, Viber, WhatsApp at 0921708-1882. Again, this is Lourdes Galang from smartfinancialplanning.info. If you have any questions or if you have any concerns, you can talk to our financial advisors, part of our team, or you can message me directly with this contact details. 
again thank you for watching this video presentation and i hope that you have learned a lot about the different financial needs of every Filipino and why is it important for you to have a smart financial planning. Okay, so thank you for your time and hope to see you in our next financial planning presentations.